Let's begin with a story. Once upon a yogi time, the disciple came to the master and said, What can I do? What can I do to attain enlightenment? And the master looked at him and said, You can do nothing. What can you do to make the sun to shine? The disciple was confused. Then why are you giving us these teachings? Why are you giving us all these practices? What is the point of all of this? And the master said, so that you will be awake when the sun begins to dawn. Now the mystic would say, the sun is always dawning. But as Henry David Thoreau wrote in Walden, only that day dawns to which you are awake. The light of existence is radiating blessings with every breath and between every breath. But are we awake? Are we awake to receive that life-giving revelation? The narrative of being awake and being asleep is central to almost all mystical traditions. Because the understanding is quite simple, is that our conditioned mind our conditioned heart, our conditioned way of being is sleepwalking. It is asleep. We are asleep. We are asleep to our true nature. We are asleep to the radiance and the ever-present blessings. We are wandering like as if in a dream. We take the dream images. We take the these dream experiences. We take the dream uh, memories as real, as enduring. We're mistaking, in other words, uh, our beliefs, our thoughts, our interpretations, yes, our emotions about life for life itself. And thus our beliefs our thoughts, our interpretations, and emotions associated with defining who you are as your true self. And this means that we are, from the mystical perspective, asleep. Our spiritual grandfather, Sri Shelley Ji, a great American-born mystic, he said, we live in the land of, we're in the land of the living dead. They move, they talk, they're take, but they're asleep. Because he was speaking mystically, asleep to the essence of existence. The process of conditioned reactivity continues even while we are walking through our conditioned dream. And so the idea is to wake up, to wake up from this trance, to wake up from this karmic uh, sleep state and to begin to feel and engage and experience and know our life and life itself without the veils of the dream interpretations clouding our vision and covering our heart. Of course you've already had these moments. You've had the moments when the fog was lifted You've had the moments when you are aware, this, this is it. This simple moment of beauty and reality, not some conceptual uh, ideal of awakening, but this, this. Perhaps you are walking in nature, perhaps with the beloved, perhaps just waking from a nap and suddenly the sunlight streaming in the window, you realized this is the light of the Holy One, life itself. It's a simple thing. It's an ordinary thing. And in its very ordinariness, in its very omnipresence, it's easy to overlook. It's easy to be distracted by the dream. But you've had these moments of awakening, and that is why you return again to the teachings. It's why you return again to the path, to the cushion, to cultivate your capacity to be present for that which is ever present. In the Katha Upanishad, it says that this path that we walk is like a razor's edge. 
It's sharp. It's narrow. It's difficult. It takes skill and attentiveness and intention to traverse. Similarly, in the New Testament, uh, Matthew 7, 14, um, says that small is the gate and narrow is the road or narrow is the way, it sometimes said, that leads to life. The Taoists speak of the masters as moving through life as if they're walking on thin ice. Attentive, sensitive, mindful. So there's this, these, these images around the world from the great masters and mystics that suggest that there is a path and it's a, it's a path of balanced self-conscious awareness that is trod through mindful attention to this moment, to this breath, to this arising. Waking up is not attaining some ideal. It's not an idea, in other words. It's not an ideal state that we can conceptualize and then kind of achieve. We all have these ideas of awakening, perhaps from our own memories of moments of clarity, then frozen those into ideals to which we wish to return. Ideals and ideas about awakening call us to the path. They call us to practice, and in that they are beautiful. But if we seek to uh, realize and uh, evaluate our realization uh, by measuring our moment-to-moment -moment experience against an ideal, then we will be trapped in a very, very profound dream, one of the most difficult to see through, the spiritual dream, which we will talk more about as these teachings continue. For waking up is not just waking up from the conventional cultural conditioning, it's waking up from conditioning itself, including the conditioning of our spiritual indoctrination, whether that was through texts, whether that was through teachers, whether that was through our own imagination. For these ideas that we have about awakening, our ideals of enlightenment are, um, are often reactions, subtle inner reactions to a deep wound in our soul, a deep sense of incompleteness. How we conceive of awakening, in other words, is shaped by this wound. And we can often imagine awakening as a state of consciousness, as a way of experiencing that will protect us from having to re-experience, feel, and face the wound within our soul. And it's paradoxical because that very wound is what has called us into this life so that we can turn back with loving awareness towards that sense of incompleteness and heal it, dissolve it, and open to the truth of our innate radiance. The wound, we could say, has been covered over by layers, by veils of scar tissue, or patterns of defensiveness from the most overt to the subtlest, subtlest. And each of these layers has been designed to both allow us to uh, succeed in the world, to succeed in our family, to make a contact and be safe in the world, to be safe, to win approval, to gain control. They've been designed the veils, the self-protective mechanisms have been designed to facilitate our, quote, success. It's a conditioned success. And at the same time, to protect us from having to ever uh, face and experience that deep uh, need. And so it's, it's, a, it's a vicious circle. The more the defenses function uh, effectively, to get us safety, approval, and control, the further we are from the healing that we really seek 
and that we've really been born for. And so it perpetuates, uh, it perpetuates dissatisfaction at a deep level and causes often a kind of frantic seeking, even, and now we're turning a corner, even a seeking of the spiritual life as a way of not having to experience that wound. But this is not the path of awakening. This will not lead us to the fulfillment, to the revelation, and to the strength, to the love, to the connection. That is what we were born for. This kind of seeking has been called in by modern psychologists, spiritual bypassing. It's a way of using spiritual teachings, spiritual practices. It's a way of entering the spiritual life as a protection or as a methodology for bypassing um, our own pain, our own karmic knots, our own suffering and the deep wounds that our life is really uh, structured on at an at a unconscious level. It's avoidance in a simple word. And in this way, spiritual bypassing is the shadow of waking up as it truly exists. It's a kind of uh, movement that is up and out of our life. It's an attachment to the ascending uh, current of existence. It's about waking up out of and away from uh, the difficulties of our life. Not waking up to the radiance, but waking up away from the challenges, moving beyond the mundane, beyond the conflicts, beyond the uh, tangles, beyond the tensions, and also very often uh, beyond the body. In this kind of spirituality, emotions, the body, relationships, money, work, the whole, as Zorba the Greek called it, the whole catastrophe is uh, demeaned. It is considered to be a distraction, not a pathway, a distraction from awakening. And the spiritual life is conceived of as being in, um, separate from our everyday, ordinary, uh, daily, mundane existence. But the spiritual life is the earth life. This moment, this life, the th that which you are aware of in any present moment is the entryway to the awakening. And awakening is turning towards life in all of its, its uh, expressions. It's developing a deeper intimacy, a deeper communion, a deeper connection to life, including those aspects of life that we would rather reject and avoid. So the over-privileging of the ascending current, the waking up away from life, is, um, leads to a kind of ungrounded spirituality, a dissociation, an avoidance of the wound, and thus a denial even of the soul, the deep memory tracks that carry all of our incompletenesses with us so that they can be healed, so that they can be liberated, so that they can be returned to their true nature as radiance. We need to turn towards them for that. As this, this kind of shadow awakening, this kind of over-attachment to the bliss of the ascending current, the ecstasy of the lifting energy, which is there, but the attachment to it um, confuses indifference for non-attachment. Non-attachment is not indifference. Non-attachment, in fact, allows us to be more fully open, more undefended, because we're non-attached to self-preservation and self protection. This kind of spirituality confuses the numbing of our emotions for the transcending of our reactivity, and it confuses 
positivity for integration. Integration embraces the shadows of life as well as the, uh, the sunlight of life into a rich tapestry of experience. There tends to be an avoidance of emotional intensity. Now, while emotions can be difficult, emotions can be overwhelming, we are cultivating in true uh, spiritual practice and true meditative practice and grounded and integrated and embodied spiritual practice, we are cultivating our capacity to meet the intensity of existence without being thrown off of our perch of clarity, mindfulness, and presence. So there's a tendency for some people to be attracted, and you should reflect. Have you been attracted to the ascending current as a way of avoiding? Have you been attracted to the spiritual life, to the teachings, to practices, perhaps as a way of bypassing or trying to step around uh, the difficulties that are fundamentally calling you to heal and to awaken? We don't want to neglect the ascending current. It is part of what we're cultivating, our, our fluency, our fluency, our ability to transcend. But we also don't want to neglect the descending current. The descending current, which is the incarnating, the embodying, and the downward flow of healing into our body-mind. Both are essential. And the practice of the wisdom heart consciousness practice of Kriya meditation is the integration of the ascending and the descending currents. It's the equalizing and the valuing and the honoring of both our capacity to release from patterns of identification and move into subtle and transcendent states of existence, as well as our capacity to reform those blessings and that radiance into the very substance of our everyday existence. This integration of ascending and descending energies uh, fosters a truly liberational spirituality, a truly life-affirming and life-embracing spirituality. The ascending and descending currents are not ideals. They are not ideas. They are experiential realities that you discover in your, and you open to in your meditation practice. Because all of the teachings, all of them are pointing to embodied, somatic, lived experiential realities. The ascending spiritual current is linked to the awakening of subtle attunements of the shift from gross to subtle to super subtle, from individualized to more universal states of consciousness. With the ascending current, you open to the powers, the fundamental powers of existence that are, that are orchestrating and that are, wo that are uh, forming your everyday experience. And the descending spirituality, the descending current, carries this radiant consciousness more, into more and more, weaves this, layer, this consciousness into more and more layered, more and more complex, more and more individualized expressions. In other words, our meditation practice is to wake up to the ever-present radiance and to wake down and bring and embody that radiance in this moment of our relationship with life. To ascend and to descend, to become free of the patterns of conditioning, the dream, to wake up from the dream, and then to re-enter our life and discover that this moment is awakening itself. Mm -hmm.